Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Dedman, one of the associate ADs here at Butler. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for those of you who are with us on butlersports.com and Facebook Live, we, we, along with your bosses, appreciate you taking a little break in your work day to join us today for a, a really, really great announcement. Um, every day is great to be a Bulldog, but today is one of those particularly great days as we welcome back one of the greatest players to ever come through this program. Uh, today, you're going to hear from our president, our athletic director, our new head coach, and then we'll take some Q&A for that new coach. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce to you the president of Butler University, Jim Denko. Thank you. I know you're all here for an in-depth analysis of the strategy of Butler University, so I thought for the next hour, <laughs> I won't do that to you. Uh, welcome, everyone. This really is a very exciting day. We are uh, so delighted uh, where we're at at this point in time. You know, they say that um, the front porch of a university is athletics. Uh, ours is a great porch, and it's well lit. So we, we're very excited uh, to have this day here, and, and uh, um, really the uh, spotlight that athletics and men's basketball uh, in particular has put on Butler University uh, has been extraordinary. Uh, it has led to a high profile for our university. It allows us to have great connections uh, with uh, our alums, uh, with prospective students, with current students, uh, with, the, with, the, with the nation, quite frankly, in terms of the recognition we have achieved over the years. Certainly the move to the Big East three years ago uh, was another positive step in the national recognition and the national profile uh, that Butler University has. Uh, and I have said uh, often that the move to the Big East was more than just about basketball. Uh, it really was a, a, a chance to compete uh, on the court and off the court with outstanding uh, universities, outstanding programs. So uh, we've had a great three years uh, in the Big East. Uh, this profile that uh, athletics, men's basketball, the Big East has uh, uh, provided to us uh, has certainly also elevated and helped elevate the entire university. Many of you know that we are in the midst of a uh, student housing uh, boom. Uh, we've upgraded those facilities. Uh, the, the campus it itself has undergone uh, great beautification. Uh, we are right now, we broke ground on a new student uh, a school of business, uh, also the sciences. So there's a lot happening at our university that, uh, uh, that really uh, elevates the prestige uh, and the recognition uh, of Butler University. Um, certainly to the, the thing we all might have saw the other day, the CTS expansion and affiliation that we are having with that campus as well uh, is another landmark occurrence at uh, Butler University. Now turning to basketball for a bit, one of the, uh, the reasons that I really don't worry when we have to add to the team or change the team a bit, uh, first we're, we're very well grounded in our long tradition of excellence, um, the mission of this university, the foundation of this university, uh, and the Butler way. The things that we do uh, in, in terms of the way that uh, we put team ahead of self, uh, uh, the way that we uh, demand commitment to this university uh, sets a great, uh, a great platform for our university and for our program. And the person, the individual, who really best personifies that, who has brought the Butler Way uh, to life, uh, is our Vice President uh, and Athletic Director, Barry Collier. Um, I have to tell you, this is, uh, this is not the first basketball transition we've gone through, as some of you know, right? Um, and the thing that, has, uh, that I've heard consistently from, from great coaches uh, like Brad and Chris uh, has been that the, the hardest thing to walk away from was the relationship that they developed with Barry Collier. He really is uh, the tradition and the foundation of the Butler Way and of this program. So it was really easy for me as president. I like to take credit for the great uh, ability for us to attract uh, coaches, but I'm nothing more than the guy at the end of the day that signs the paperwork that allows it to happen uh, because the person that does make it happen in reality uh, is Barry Collier. And uh, one of the reasons we don't really need a search firm because he is so recognized uh, in this uh, uh, world of sports and in this country is one of the premier athletic directors uh, out there. So he has done another great job in finding us a coach, and I'm going to give it to him to, uh, to make that announcement. So Barry, you want to step up here? Thank you, Jim, <clears throat> and thank you all for being here. Uh, President Danko is a special leader and a special friend, and I want to thank him for his commitment 
and our Board of Trustees' commitment to keeping our program at the top level nationally. This is just one more day in that direction, but a big day nonetheless. Uh, we have uh, many things to be thankful for. One of them, we appreciate the great work that Chris Holtman did. We wish he and his family well. Uh, and we also know that uh, uh, we're a better place because of the three years he spent here. Uh, once Chris told us that he was uh, moving on and made a decision, we moved with purpose and at a pretty quick pace to bring our new coach uh, on board. Uh, there's a significant interest in this, this position, as you well could imagine, from a national level. Uh, but it was especially gratifying to talk to so many who are connected to this program. And we were very grateful for that very talented group of applicants that, that went through this process. Uh, I've also been in contact with our team, and several of them are here today. And that's an indication of the enthusiasm that they have going forward. Uh, our recruits and, and our uh, uh, team that has, has put in years here already, and they too are excited about the future. Uh, it's important that uh, we, uh, f to President Danko, to our board, to me, that we would find a man who embodies the Butler way, and we've been able to do that. Uh, we wanted a, a person with a, a proven track record of competitive success, a providing student athletes with a great experience and experience in a way to uh, lead a program forward in the Big East. We found that man. We found that man in Laval, Jordan. Uh, I'm not going to be able to read this now. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm uh, thrilled that we found someone who represents Butler, represented Butler as a student athlete, as an assistant coach, as an alum, as a student in general, in the first class manner that he has. Whether he was here at that time or afterwards in the positions he's held uh, across the Midwest here since he, since he left Butler. He has uh, enjoyed tremendous success on a number of levels, obviously competitively, but also as a mentor and a leader, a developer of young men, and uh, a person who accentuates the value of, an, of a higher education, a degree from Butler University, and one that will make all those things happen for us as we go forward. Uh, he's recruited and developed players that have won championships and advanced to the NCAA tournament and yes, played in, successfully in the NBA. We, are, uh, uh, we know that he is a man of high character and integrity. Uh, one of the very first uh, check marks that we have to make here in hiring someone uh, to lead this program. I, f I first met Laval about 20 years ago. Uh, I was in his living room in Albion, Michigan and in the recruiting process as he was in his uh, high school uh, senior year. And I remember speaking to him and his family and talking to them about the great possibilities of what could happen when we put a talented young man uh, with a successful basketball program. It's kind of funny, we've been talking about that same thing the last couple of days uh, through this process. So we're proud to bring Laval, his wife Destiny, and their three daughters, Ava, Elena, and Adeline, back to Butler. I see a future that is bright and full of opportunity. So with that, please welcome the 24th men's basketball coach in Butler history, Laval Jordan. John, uh, John didn't tell the truth. I wasn't that great of a player. Um, 
Uh, but wow, I'm, I'm I'm looking in the room, uh, and I'm gonna try not to do, try not to do that, coach. Uh, and I still call you coach. Uh, but there is a, a ton of emotion um, throughout, you know, my my, uh, my spirit with uh, with this move, uh, coming back to Butler University. As I stand here today as the the head coach uh, of the men's basketball program, it is truly an honor uh, and and very humbling. Um, it's a tremendous opportunity for me and my family. Uh, my wife grew up in Indianapolis, uh, and so uh, it means a lot to be, to be here for all of us. Um, I want to give honor and glory to God, who's the head of our household, uh, who guides my steps uh, and, um, and, and uses me for his will. Uh, I want to thank my wonderful wife, Destiny, who is absolutely amazing uh, in the coaching profession, you have to marry a, um, a special person, and, and I've definitely done that. It is, she, she is the best recruit I've ever signed, no question. <laughs> um, her, her, her sacrifice uh, and her love uh, and knowing uh, that she's there uh, throughout whatever is, is, is important for me to do what I do. Uh, I want to thank my daughters, Ava, Alana, and Adeline for their love and their support, um, and I know uh, they're excited to get home next to to grandma, uh, their, other, uh, their other grandma. Uh, we just left a grandma in Milwaukee. Um, I want to thank the rest of my family. My, my, my father's here, Nate Mitchell. Um, my mother-in-law, Deborah McDonald, her, and her husband, Tim. Uh, we have other family members in the room uh, just for their encouragement and support throughout you know, our our, my entire life and our journey together uh, with Destiny and I. I want to thank President Jim Danko and, and Barry, athletic director, uh, Coach Collier, I still call him coach, um, because leading Butler basketball is absolutely a dream come true for me. And um, for them to believe in me to do that is a, is a very, very special thing, uh, and I will take it very seriously. I want to express my sincere gratitude uh, for Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Chancellor Mark Money, um, athletic director Amanda Braun, uh, for them taking a chance on me as a first-time head coach and giving me an opportunity to uh, lead their program and, and believe in a vision uh, for their men's basketball program and university as well. Um, the 14 months spent there at UWM was um, something that it was a great experience for, for my family, uh, something we will always remember. And uh, there were so many people that I met at that place, fans, alumni, um, community members that were in full support uh, and fully behind our vision there, and, and we thank them for that. I want to thank my staff and players that were there with me, um, their belief uh, in, in the vision that we uh, wanted to accomplish, um, and they, I think they proved that buying in as a collective unit um, for five days in Detroit, uh, that if you work together as a team and believe in each other, uh, we were on the brink of history in the Horizon League tournament this past season, and I always look back and be proud, be proud of that, no, no question. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge Chris Holtman. Uh, Chris has been a friend of mine uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, he and his staff did a tremendous job here for the last three seasons, and uh, he's a terrific person uh, and a quality coach, and we, we, um, we certainly... When I look at these guys as I've talked to them uh, and all the players that are currently in the locker room, uh, the incoming recruits as well, it's clear that he stayed true to Butler values uh, and the values here and what the Butler way is all about uh, as you get to know these guys and I'm, I'm getting to know them. Um, I've been blessed to have a number of people who have impacted my life uh, professionally in an in a extremely positive way. Uh, and great mentors uh, that have shaped me, uh, especially Barry Collier, uh, in, in number one in, in terms of uh, I would not be coaching uh, if, if he was not a part of my journey. Uh, Todd Licklider, who is uh, somewhere in the room, uh, who gave me my first opportunity to coach, and, and I'll be forever indebted to him for that. Um, Brad Stevens, who is a, uh, a true friend and confidant, uh, and always picks up the phone as we worked side by side with each other and uh, still feel like that sometimes today. And uh, John Beeline, who is a 
tremendous human being, an outstanding coach, and a great leader. Uh, and I learned so much from him during my time there working with him. Uh, Butler's a special place. When you look at the package of uh, the strong academic mission, when you look at the passionate fan base that we have in the heart of basketball country, when you look at Hinkle Fieldhouse, which is the best place to play, coach, or watch a game in the world, uh, when you look at the Big East Conference and, and President Danko's uh, helping us get there and one of the best conferences in the country and a tradition of, of success with so many players that have contributed to that, um, there's, there's an amazing uh, feeling when you come to this place. And there's so many intangibles about Butler University that are so well articulated in the Butler way. And it's built on values. Uh, this, this place is built on values, and we use those values as the guiding principles in our basketball program, and those values are in my DNA, uh, having lived it uh, each and every day as a student athlete here at Butler. And I've carried those values with me. I've carried the Butler way with me everywhere I've coached, no question. This, uh, the same values would continue to lead us to attract High character, high achievers. Um, we'll take a holistic approach. I believe coaching is teaching and mentoring. Uh, I wouldn't be who I am today without great teachers and great mentors in the locker room helping me grow from a young adult to a man. Uh, so we'll take a holistic approach to develop our young, our young people so that when they leave, they have lifelong habits and they'll be great husbands, great fathers, and community leaders. Uh, and as I see some former teammates, former guys in the back, uh, you know, they're great examples of exactly that. Uh, and I believe talent and culture wins. And there's certainly a history of success here due to the culture. If you date all the way back to Coach Tony Hinkle, um, a foundation of values that was built and set in place by Coach Collier through Thad Mata, Todd Licklider, Brad Stevens, Brandon Miller, Chris Holtman. Uh, and that will not change. But you also need talent. Uh, and again, I wasn't that talented, John. You can't stand up here and say that. <laughs> but I look in the back, and, and all, a, a lot of the guys that have reached out to me to congratulate me, um, we've had some great, great players uh, put on a Butler uniform, uh, and they were indeed talented. And as I've get, gotten to know these guys and through, through some film study and conversations. I'm excited because I, I believe wholeheartedly that we have a young, talented group of young men. Um, I look forward to getting the, to know all of them better. I think the relationships uh, and the energy in coaching sometimes, a lot, many times trumps strategy. Uh, so I'm looking forward to developing strong relationships with with the current players uh, and, and our players that are incoming. I also can't wait, wait to reconnect with uh, a ton of former teammates uh, and alumni, uh, again, that, that played here at Butler University. Uh, I think the connection with them is extremely important. They've sacrificed, bled, sweat for Butler, uh, and I know there's nobody rooting harder during a Butler basketball game than those guys. Um, and, and I believe Butler, Butler basketball is more than just a program, it's a family. And if you've been around here the last two years, uh, you've felt that, uh, and you know exactly what I mean by that. So we all realize it is bigger than any player, it's bigger than any coach. Um, and for my charge is to get these, these guys to understand when we play, we play to make them proud. So we'll work hard to recruit individuals that have Butler toughness, um, who can positively, positively impact our athletic community and our academic community, guys who want to be great players, that are serious students, and that are tremendous teammates. We have a terrific footprint to begin with here in the state of Indiana. So I am, um, as I think about my journey uh, to this point, this building, uh, there are relationships that are created in this building that last a lifetime. Uh, I look around the room and see 
many, many close friends, uh, whether they were teammates or not, uh, that spent time with in these hallways of Hinkle Field House. Uh, I see the, the, um, the person that recruited me to, uh, and changed my life uh, and, and um, gave me an offer to, to attend this university. Uh, and again, I thought I might have recruited him this time, I don't know. Um, but again, a, a life-changing uh, moment for me and my family. I think about Joel Cornett, and I know uh, as a teammate and a friend, uh, a, a, a lifelong encourager, he was um, my biggest fan uh, as a coach uh, and believed in me, like so many other friends and teammates. And so I, I want to create that experience, and, and we will because that's what we do at Butler, right, for each and every student athlete that, wear, that comes here and puts on that uniform. And that gets me excited to work with this group, with these guys. Uh, I can't wait to hit the ground running. We've got summer practices leading up to a foreign trip to Spain where um, we'll get to, to, to be around each other uh, for quite some time, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that as much as the basketball piece and, and us getting to know each other and, and connect there, but uh, just spending the time together so that we can learn, you know, the backgrounds and, and, um, and share this next step together. So this is a tr truly uh, a dream come true. I am blessed, uh, honored, I'm humbled to lead this program. I can't wait for the first game. Uh, when I look up, I listen and hear the chant, B-U, T-L-E, are you a bulldog? And I may stop coaching for a second <laughs> and turn around and say, hell yeah. <laughs> um, so it is, uh, it's good to be home and go dogs. You do it? Well, you can do it. Don't, yeah. Last time you got up here, you didn't tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be great to work with. This is going to be fun. Um, we're gonna, we have two microphones on the side here. Uh, we'd ask if you had a question, please raise your hand. We'll get one of those to you. Uh, if you could stand while you ask the question, we're going to put you on this nice camera right here. Uh, and then following uh, Q&A with Coach, uh, we'll take uh, Coach and uh, Barry Collier to a different room for one-on-ones. So with that, uh, you're back up. Laval, Bob Kravitz with WTHR here in Indy. Uh, you said you recruited Barry. Can you take us a little <laughs> bit through the process and when Barry offered, how quick, how long did it take before you said, yeah, absolutely? Uh, you know, I, uh, Barry's done this, you know, a, f a few times now, uh, and there's always been an, an interest on my part in, in, this, uh, in this opportunity. Uh, it, it's home, and so um, after the first contact, it was a few days, and I know he was doing his due diligence. Uh, again, this is a great place, great university, great people. There are uh, many, many candidates and, uh, that are attracted to this. So I think we contacted on Friday um, and it kind of went, and I was, we, we, uh, dis he contacted me again after a phone conversation um, to, uh, to meet in person, uh, and then it was kind of, Wait, waiting for a uh, decision, um, and then, oh, was it late Monday evening where uh, we talked again, and and uh, that led to this opportunity. And so, uh, it, it moves, it moved really, really fast. Um, and so, as I was communicating with with my daughters, uh, my 12-year-old sixth-grade daughter, uh, and trying to help everybody understand um, what this place means. Hey, Laval, uh, Greg Doyle from Indy Star. Uh, congratulations okay. for coming home. Thank you. Um, when, my, when Thad was fired, a lot of folks thought Holman might have a shot at that. And then the news started breaking Thursday night that he was talking to him deeply. I'm just wondering, at what point did you allow yourself to dream that this job might be open, A, and B, you might get it? It's always, it's always been a dream that I might get it. Um, I think... Uh, I, not until things were official 
did I, you know, uh, realistically think about think about it, you know, amongst all the uh, speculation. Welcome back, Coach. Thank you. Tom Davis with the Fort Wayne News Sentinel. On February 26th, uh, Milwaukee loses a game to Oakland. You're 8-23. and 23. It's freezing in Milwaukee. It stinks in Milwaukee. I mean, the wind's blowing off the lake. It's, it's bitter. How did you get that team to buy into their current circumstance and, and motivate them to finish the way you did? And how will that be applicable to what you'll do at Butler? Um, that's a that's a really good question. I think it started from from day one, Tom, um, with carrying values there, uh, spending time getting to know uh, young people, having a having a really good staff alongside me, and through a ton of adversity, um, continuing to keep hope that if we just believed in this mission, if we believed in doing it a certain way, uh, that we would bear fruit at, at some point. Uh, and it got hard and it got tough and there was a lot of frustration. Uh, but we had really good young men in the locker room, as we've always had here. Uh, and, and so in the midst of all that, we, we came together, they came together, as players started to uh, really trust each other through that process. And uh, it, it was, you know, quite rewarding, you know, to see their belief uh, through those couple days. I mean, we lost nine games in a row heading into Detroit. Uh, and they still were listening, uh, eyes on the coach, and believed that we could really do this thing. Yes, uh, David Woods from the Indianapolis Star. Welcome, welcome back, Laval. Thank you. Thank you. Have you had a chance to uh, reach out to the uh, incoming recruits and, and try to see if they remain recruits? And, and how soon do you think you'll be able to uh, assemble a, a coaching staff? Uh, with, in response to the first question, yes. Uh, I've talked to all the, the current players uh, that are here, and those, those conversations were, were great. I'm extremely impressed by the guys in that locker room. Uh, and then all the guys that are signed to come as well. We, we've all had conversations, and, and that, those went well. Uh, and we'll have follow-up you know, in, in hopes that we, uh, that we keep them all uh, on, on board. Uh, and then... Your second question? Yes. Uh, Staff-wise, uh, that is in the works. You know, uh, uh, when Barry asked me that, I said, you know, with this place, it's, it's, it's special. So we'll put together a staff that I fully believe can, um, that, that fits Butler, uh, and that will recruit young people that fit Butler that are talented enough, um, and, but always put, you know, have their priorities in place. Um, and so that is in the works as well. There's a, it happens pretty quick. Uh, and that is the, the the difficult part about it. There's a lot of a lot of people you meet along the way, and a lot and many loyalties. Uh, but we have to do what's best for Butler University. Uh, so I'm working through that currently. Hello, Coach uh, Cliff Brown, Indy Star. Uh, just curious, when you were a player here, did you ever ever thoughts about you being a coach here or a coach anywhere? And if not, when did you start thinking of yourself as a coach and did Coach Collier, as you call him, have anything to do with uh, that transformation from player to coach? Uh, no, I wanted to play. <laughs> I wanted to play as long as possible. And so, uh, but I will say uh, my dad coached me in high school. Uh, I didn't always enjoy that. Um, but he, 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 was, uh, he was a coach and a mentor. Um, and, and so, you know, I was, I was fortunate as uh, I played overseas for a year, played in the D-League a season, uh, and came back here to Indianapolis. And um, Coach, Coach Licklider gave me an opportunity in an administrative role. Uh, and the thing that I enjoyed the most was just being back. Uh, you weren't allowed, you're not allowed to be on the court, uh, but just being in the locker room with the guys and, and the mentorship piece and the big brother aspect of things. Uh, as I was learning from you know, Brad and, and Matthew Graves, uh, Jeff Meyer, Coach Licklider were all on the staff at that time. Uh, and obviously, you know, I had been a player under really, you know, tremendous coaches. Uh, not only Coach Collier, but Coach Mata was here, uh, John Gross. Uh, and so I had gotten a wealth of information as a player that I could apply. Um, and so I was, I've been fortunate uh, to make it to this point.
Hey, Laval. Greg Doyle again. Um, Butler hadn't quite broken through, I don't think. Maybe borderline when you signed here. How does a kid from Michigan pick this place? I know you had Xavier and a couple of those schools. Why, why Butler in 19, whatever that was? <laughs> <laughs> My 20-year high school reunions, reunions in September. So um, 1997, I was arri arriving. You know what? Um, coach, coach and the staff um, were recruiting actually a teammate of mine that was, he was our best player, was extremely talented, um, and maybe didn't necessarily fit the values. Uh, but as they were pursuing him, you know, we, we were playing together. So, again, I tell you, I've been blessed. And maybe I made two shots that night and uh, you know, received a phone call, and, and it started from there. And as we uh, were looking at options and, and my dad was helping me through it, we came uh, and took one, one official visit. And it was here. And on the way home, uh, he looked over at me in the passenger seat, uh, and he asked me, what else are you looking for? And uh, I couldn't answer it. And he said, well, I uh, will sleep on it, but if you don't have an answer for that, this is the place. Uh, and it was the people, you know, meeting the teammates. Mike Marshall was my student host. Um, they did tell me I would have uh, – see, I wore jersey number 22 – and Mike wore jersey number 22. And I think, I don't know if it's Barry or Thad that told me, uh, if you want it, you got to wrestle Mike for it. Uh, so I changed the number 25. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it was the people. It was once I, once I visited and, and um, met everyone in Indianapolis. And uh, the thought of, at that time, um, I think they were coming off or had not appeared in the NCAA tournament. Uh, that year, my senior year in high school was the first. And then my freshman year, we, we did it again. And by my senior year, we actually won a game for the first time in 39 years. And, you know, away it went because of, because of the type of people. Coach, I was talking with a uh, – really successful head coach. Uh, he's been in the business about three decades, and he was talking about John Beeline. He went to a clinic, and Coach Beeline spoke, and this guy who's got three decades of experience walked out of there and said, I'm never going to be as smart basketball-wise as that guy. What did you learn from Coach Beeline, and what does make him so special that will help you lead this program? Yeah, really, really good question. He is, uh, he is tremendous. He's an innovator. Uh, on the basketball court, he's a teacher by nature, uh, and just you know, being around and watching him teach uh, the game and teach life lessons through the sport, uh, uh, unbelievable um, influence on me. Um, and I, I think the biggest thing is, m one of the biggest things is he's he was a tremendous CEO. Oh, he's always been a head coach, and he's done it at many different levels, from high school all the way up to to Michigan, and so. You know, the ability to ask questions as, a, as an assistant coach who dreams of being a head coach one day, of uh, how to manage, you know, everything that it entails to sit in that seat, uh, you know, those six years and, and getting that you know, experience and one-on-one -on -one tutelage from him is, you know, I'm, I'm indebted to him forever. 